All right. Catchy title, right? Because I bet there's a whole lot of people, myself included, that just a few years ago did not know how to make $178,600 in one sale. And I'm going to break it down. Okay. The things I'm going to show you folks, okay? Nothing is going to be Nothing's going to be earth shattering. Nothing is going to be like, wow, that's amazing. But what I want you to understand, this business is simple. It's not easy. It's simple in that the steps that we do are very, very simple. Okay. But doing them and doing them over and over and over and over again. And even when you don't believe in it, even when you're doubting yourself, even when you think the market's shifting, I should probably do this. I should probably do foreclosures. I should probably do ba 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 I should probably do leasing. Da, da, da. If you stay the course, I promise you, right? Does anybody know, like, 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 think, think about Christopher Columbus. That guy didn't have a GPS. That guy didn't have a little, pretty little iPhone, right? What did he have? He had the North Star. He had a compass. And all he did, what did he do? He followed that North Star. So if you set being a listing agent, a commercial listing agent as your North Star, okay, that is the fastest way. I promise you on my life strike, me dead with a bolt of lightning if that isn't the fastest way for you to make the most amount of money in this business. I don't know of another business where you don't have to have a college degree, where all you have to do is get your real estate license, which you can do in five to seven days and in a lot of states. Maybe it'll take you 30. And if you learn the right skills, you learn how to reach out and communicate with people you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars in a, in a single transaction. The reason I know is because I've done it and I'm about to explain to you how it works, okay? So what, what a lot of people will see, what you'll notice about your own business is you do many of the things. You might do all of the things that I'm about to tell you, but the question is, do you do them with the amount of consistency? That the next guy who doesn't do me a favor. I'm just going to put on the gallery real quick. Okay. I want everybody to raise your hand. Does anybody know what, what a 1% earner in this country makes? Do me a favor, put it in the chat. Let me know if, if you know what a 1% earner in this country makes, right? Just out of curiosity, right? And then, and then here's the thing, guys, the whole thing, one percenters, this isn't, this isn't a political conversation. This is, this is like economics, right? So I like, um, so let, let's take some guesses. Brian says 850K. Nathaniel says 80K. Uh, Stephen Carbelk says 425. Brian said used to be 450. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. 450 plus. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys are, 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 aren't far off. According to CNN.com, okay, a top 1% earner was $428,000. Okay. So, right. Pretty surprising when you hear all like what what like LeBron James makes and you hear Warren Buffett and all these other people and you know like Garth Brooks or whatever. But like when you really consider it, four hundred twenty eight thousand dollars and above is what only one percent of this country is able to accomplish. Now, everybody, do me a favor, okay? I'm fired up today. Everybody, raise your hand. Cameras on. Raise your hand if you want to be a one percent earner. Every single hand better be up. If not, get off the call. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong room. <laughs> go, go order a pizza, you know? Okay, every hand up. Okay, Brian, I see Brian's. I see Tyler's hands up. I see Missy. Yes, okay, good. Now keep them up. Keep them up, folks, okay? Now, keep your hand up if you're willing to do what 99% of people will not do. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. Because what I'm about to show you right now, okay, you can put them down. Thank you, folks. Appreciate that. All right. What I'm about to show you now, okay, is what 99% of people won't do. And I promise you the reason why there's a whole lot of room for success, successful people. There's a whole lot of room at the top. You know why? Because most people would rather cut out at five o'clock on a Friday. Most people don't want to put in the extra time. But you know what? To the victor goes to the spoils. The person is willing to work a little bit harder than the next guy. There's not much. I think it's like Zig Ziglar or Brian Tracy or one of those guys said like he noticed there's there's not a lot of competition past 40 hours a week. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. Okay. So guys, very, very simple to make multi six figure commission checks. Okay. It's nothing. It's not rocket science. Five days a week of prospecting. 
That's it. Standard, standard. Okay. Five days a week, not three, not two, not one, not, I had to go to the dentist. Not, I'm not feeling well. I don't feel like it. I have call reluctance five days a week, non-negotiable. Would any of you um, ever uh, not eat for a day other than the people that like fast, right? Would you ever not like feed your newborn for a day or two, right? Well, guess what? Your business in its early infancy, right? Is like a newborn. You would never in a million years not feed a baby. You would never in a million years not feed a puppy. Why would you not feed your business with new opportunities via prospecting, right? Okay, five days a week, non-negotiable. You guys with me so far? Thumbs up. Give me some thumbs up. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, all right, so next up, follow up. Guys, so, so, uh, somebody mentioned it before, how, uh, how follow-up is a weak spot. You're not alone, okay? A lot of folks do not follow up. Don't worry about it. You're not alone, okay? But does anybody here want to know the key to making the most amount of money in this business possible, okay? I don't take every listing on the first, first shot. I wish I did. I wish I did. I wish I was that charismatic. I wish I could just like abracadabra, sign the listing presentation, or sign the listing agreement. It doesn't work like that. You know, it works 90% of the time. Every Friday at 10 o'clock, I pick up the phone. Hey, Mr. Smith. Yeah, it's just Christian. Yeah, 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 we spoke. Yeah, from Dark Horse Commercial. Yeah, we spoke about your one, two, three Main Street property. Can I help you get that sold? Are, are, are you ready to get moving on that yet? How, how, you know, that, remember that, that, that thing you mentioned about your partner? Did you guys get that worked out? How, what, what, what can we do? Like, how can I be of assistance to help this move along, right? Guys, what you're doing is you, there's no magic incantation. This isn't like, you know, black magic. What it is is very, very simple. It's you outlast the next person. There's this concept um, uh, called uh, persistence hunting, okay? And what persistence hunting is, and it's the reason why human beings are at the top of the food chain, right? Uh, the reason why you're at the top of the food chain is we are able to outpace our prey because we are bipedal. We can cover more ground than, let's say, a wolf. We can cover more ground than a turkey. We can cover more ground than our prey. So what we're able to do is we're out, able to outlast them. The reason why we call our prospecting method in my coaching program persistence prospecting is because you outlast everybody. Absolutely everybody, okay? Because a lot of people follow up, but most people won't follow up 10, 15, 20, 30 times. This deal that, that I'm about to tell you about, okay? I had probably... Before I even met the owner, probably reached out to him 15 to 20 times. And then he refused to meet me at the building. So I went to the building on a Sunday, took pictures, called him on Monday, said, hey, I took some pictures. Do you have some time? I met him in his office. Okay. Didn't even walk the building with him. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds great. You know, send me some paperwork. And I sent him some paperwork, heard nothing. Followed up another dozen times. And then didn't, he said, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about it. Followed up another dozen times. And then finally, after... 40 calls, you know, and, and it's, it's not every single day. I'm not a stalker technically, but like, it I would be like, you know, pleasant conversation, trying to help out, trying to be helpful, trying to see, Hey, can I help you do it? Call them once, twice a week, something like that. You do that over a six month period. Sooner or later, people are like, you know what, this guy or this gal, they're pretty persistent, you know, and um, follow up will make you more money than anything, than any magic script you think you have more than, than anything, follow up. So every person you've ever been on a meeting with Friday morning, 10 a.m., you owe it to your business to follow with everyone you've been on a meeting with in the last 90 to 180 days. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a one in the chat if, if that makes sense to you guys, okay? Brian says it is one. Ron says he's a top 1% earner. Heck yeah. That's right, Ron, because you've been in the business a long time. You've kept after it. Uh, something tells me you, you, you stayed after your, uh, your previous clients and you took care of people. That's how you do it. Rosa's one. You, you bet one. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Guys, I am not the smartest guy. I went to state school, you know, big whoop, you know, but I do happen to have very high levels of PhD and that's not my education. I just have a bachelor's, you know, from a state school. Go Seminoles. Go Seminoles. If you're a Canes fan, sorry, can't help you here. We don't teach Canes fans. Just kidding. But uh, but I happen to have very high levels of PhD. What is that? Okay. That is pig-headed discipline. I don't know when to quit. Has you ever seen a dog with a bone that's really, really hungry, right? I, I want to succeed really, really bad and I will outlast the next guy. I that's that's it. I just want I just want it 
badly. You know, I, I, I want the feeling of success, the feeling of winning, the feeling of, of achievement is very important to me. And if you want it, find your why, whether it's that, oh God, what a cutie. Oh my, hi, hey buddy. Sorry, let's just get the, the, the cutest little guy in her lap. But like find your why, whether it's your family, whether it's your future, whether it's a cause you believe in, whether it's donating to your church, whether it's, you know, s- saving the planet, whatever it is, find it and channel it because that's what's going to give you what you need when sometimes this business gets hard. Pig-headed discipline to do the things that you know you need to do even when you don't feel like doing them. Has anyone ever here hit the snooze alarm, snooze button over and over and over again? I do it all the time, right? right. But think about it. Imagine if you had a why big enough. I see, see, uh, uh, hey, Alexa, look at me. Like sooner or later, right? You got to get out of bed. If you have something that's pulling you out of bed, if your, your, your dreams are big enough, your goals big enough, you don't have to, right? If you got a family with 10 hungry mouths to feed, guess what? You're going to figure out a way to feed them. You with me? Okay. So here's the thing, guys, right? My biggest tear I ever went on in, in terms of earnings, in terms of brokerage and stuff like that, right? 800 days in a row. Now, here's the thing. I didn't make 50 dials every single one of those days, but Monday through Friday, 800 days in a row, I picked up the phone and created opportunities for my business. I fed the baby so that one day that baby could feed me. Okay. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm able to give back now because I put myself in a position. This business has been very good to me and I want to help it make it easier for you folks. Okay. For you folks that haven't quite cracked the code, this business isn't terribly difficult, but what it is, is it's like, do you guys ever have lockers um, in, in high school? You know, it's like 24 to the right, 32 to the left, 16 to the right, and it pops, right? What happens folks, if you don't get all three numbers in a row, Correct. Type type that in the chat. Tell me what happens if you do not get all three numbers right? (laughs) Brian says nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Uh, I I see Christian says this is some serious motivation. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. That's what we're here to do. We're here to get you to understand this business isn't hard, but you got to get all three numbers dialed in. And once you do it, what happens? It pops and then it pops again. And then it pops again. And every time you do it, it pops again. Does that make sense, folks? Right? Right? Okay, cool. Exactly. So when you start to feed your business every day, and it's like that snowball gaining momentum, what happens? What happens, folks? That snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And at a certain point, it hits what's called a critical mass. And it takes on a life of itself. And then people start calling you for business. There's been times where I'm like, will this phone please stop ringing? And I remember a day when all I wanted it to do was ring, okay? Sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I'm I'm thankful for for, for the fact that this phone just doesn't stop ringing sometimes, okay? So, and and, and, and I'm just a regular guy who just sat down and just was, was dedicated and just did it over and over and over again until it got enough, just that snowball rolling down the hill, all right? So like I said, I am not the smartest guy in the world, okay? Went to state school, had a really, really good time, had a really good football team, right? And I'm not the hardest worker. There are people out there, like people that come in from other countries, like the average, like I think think the average Korean immigrant out earns the average American within seven years of arriving in this country. Why? Because they're willing to outwork everybody. Right. A lot of people with I love people that have come from different cultures. I, I live here in Miami and we are surrounded by people that have gone through serious hardships to come to this country to just have the opportunity to come here and win. Right. So, like, there are a lot of people that work harder than me. There's just no question. But the way I view it is if I can't outwork somebody, I'll outsmart them. And if I can't outsmart them, I'll outwork them. One way or the other, I like. The, the, the pool of competition in your market, I promise you, is a lot smaller than you think. If you just figure, just just work on this philosophy. If you can't outsmart them, you'll outwork them. You can't outwork them, you'll outsmart them. And, and does that make does that resonate with any of you guys? Just, just, just type yes if you're like, yeah, I, I, like that. That makes sense. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the hardest working. But I tell you what, make 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 it like a a, a combo of the two. You know. Um, and and we're, guys, we're going to be doing a little Q&A at the end. So, so Dave, I see you raising your hand. Absolutely, buddy. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your question. Or if you want to put the question in the chat, I'll be happy to answer it at the end, right? 
Okay. So that's the thing, folks, you don't have to be extraordinarily gifted. Okay. And, and by the way, if you want to learn these skills, if you want to be brought and, and held accountable to do your motivation, to do, do your, your prospect, be motivated to prospect every day. If you want to learn the skills to take listings, if you want to type hashtag skills, we have a six month program where we help people, right? Shameless promotion. It is what it is. I'm here to help you. But what I really want to do is help you hit the highest levels. I can only help you so much a half hour a week. Imagine if we stepped into your business and we work forward together every single day. Okay. So if you guys want to learn that hashtag skills, um, and we can, we can tell you a little bit about our mentorship, right? But most importantly, folks, this is what happens, okay? There's no easy way to make a million dollars, okay? Everybody wants to make a million dollars, but only so many people are willing to do the things. But it's the person that you become along the way that, that, that uh, to earning your first million. Have you ever noticed like some people like they hit their first million and next thing you know, it's 3 million, 5 million, 10 million. It's not because money gets any easier, right? It's because the... the they're like, it's like, think of it like a statue and you're chiseling it out of stone. And next thing you know, it takes on this form. Well, it took a lot of work to take on, on that form, but you now have the mold. You now have the, 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 the skills. You now have the tenacity. You now have the, the motivation. Okay. Right. Very, very important. Right. So getting to the real deal story here. Okay. So with that mentality, I'm, I'm taking listings here in Miami. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Right. And like, I, I found one and it's in like one of the hottest sub markets, this area called Wynwood. Right. And it's like, it's, this area has absolutely blown up. It used to be an art colony. It's like, it's the largest, um, it's the largest, um, street murals. Some people call it graffiti, but they call it street art nowadays. Like they have art Basel. People come in from all over the world, but people come, and it's one of the hot, it's, it's like the coolest, hippest, trendiest little areas, right? And it's, it's been blowing up the last 10 years. And I found a property that had been on the market. They're asking 6.4 million. It just sat, sat, and sat. And this is the one. I hunted down the owner and he wouldn't meet me at the property. And I went to his office and he, and finally, like, like I kind of like, just, yeah, come on, let's, let's get this thing done. Bah, 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 bah. And, and 30, 40 calls later, I finally got the listing signed. Okay. Now. Okay. Like I said, it'd been on the, the market over a year, called and called and called. And then once I got the listing, that's when I kicked it into high gear because most people will stop at the listing and they'll be like, okay, cool. I'm a stud broker or stud S broker. Now I'm just going to leave it like it is. And then just let some other broker bring, bring the, the, uh, the buyer. Ah, ah, ah. How many of you would rather earn $2 for the same amount of work as then $1, type $2 in the chat if, if, if that's something that you want, right? Type $2 would be like, for, like for, for the same amount of time of work, you'd rather make $2 than $1. Okay, it's kind of, <laughs> I see Star put in $3, $20. Now we're talking guys, yes. That's the, that's the thing, folks. You got to understand, right? So many people miss the mark. Some people are like, okay, cool. Like, like if they do go out and become listing brokers, what they wind up doing is they're like, oh, cool. I got the listing. Now the market can bring me a buyer. It pains me. It pains me when someone from my market, right? When, when I should say, when an investor from my market comes and uh, they are represented by another broker and I've spoken to that investor and I have their cell phone number and, and they, they, they come represented by another broker. Why? Because I could have reached out to them myself and got both sides of the deal. Right. And may in, in transactions. I love it in a transaction when the other broker is me. Can anybody tell me why? Get, 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 type in, type in a reason why why the uh uh Ruchis are on top of it. Yes. Why 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 is double ending deals better? Okay. Missy, you hit it right on the head. It's control, guys. It's it's yes, making more money is better, but has anyone ever played that game of telephone? where it goes, the message goes from seller to broker, broker to broker, broker to buyer, buyer to broker, broker to broker, broker to seller, right? There's a lot of things that can go wrong in that little game of telephone. And then, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something that, that's going to be really, really alarming. Um, some commercial real estate agents have egos and they like to beat their chest and they like to be right. And they like to put, throw their weight around. You know, the only language that I speak, that's the green language. I don't care about pride. I don't care about ego. I want to do what's best by my client and I want to make money while doing it. I want to offer a fair service. So I don't care about the ego, but there's a whole lot of people that want to show you this and they're going to negotiate down to the last dollar, blah, 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 blah. Forget all that. So my point is when you are the only broker, 
you take a lot of that out of the equation. It makes it so much easier and so much simpler, right? Uh, Star says, don't want any lawyers in the mix. Yeah, yeah, we, we affectionately call the lawyers the deal killing department, right? Because lawyers are, Star, thank you so much for saying that. Bro, uh, I'm sorry, lawyers in particular, they get paid whether or not the job, whether or not the deal closes, okay? And what winds up happening is they love to argue over a period comma and an apostrophe. And they love showing that other uh, uh, um, attorney on the other side how much they know and how they're not going to da, 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 da. And next thing you know, they, they take it upon themselves to start like renegotiating the deal. It's like, yo, pump the brakes, G. You are here to mine the apostrophes, periods, and commas. And, and, and like, we already brought buyer and seller together under certain terms. You know what I mean? So- and they love your commission. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, there's a lot of lawyers who are like, wait a minute. I made four grand on title services and 1500 bucks to close this. And you made 70,000, 80,000, 100,000 for a couple of phone calls. Has anyone ever gotten that? You, anyone never tell you you make a lot of money for making a couple of phone calls? Has anyone ever said that? You want to watch my blood boil? <sighs> yeah, Brian says yes. Yeah, exactly. People will tell you that. It's like, no, 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 no. Do you understand it took me 5,000 phone calls to find a deal like this? You know. So in any event, but the point is, guys, called and called and called, got the listing, and then I decided to work smarter. Common sense, guys. All I did was I pulled a list of likely sellers and buyers in the areas. I knew it was one of the hottest submarkets in Miami. So I said to myself, who, okay, <laughs> okay. This, is, this is like so common sense, right? Who is the most likely person, for the ladies out there, who's the most likely person to buy red uh, Jimmy Choo shoes? Type it in the chat. Who's the most likely person? If you're gonna, if you're gonna go and, and advertise, guys that don't know what Jimmy Choo's are, sorry, I grew up with three sisters. I know this kind of stuff, right? Okay, Missy started with saying a woman. Okay, let's let's get some more things. Like, who's the most likely person to buy red high heel shoes? Okay, if in case you don't know who Jimmy Choo is, right? Come on, who else? Who else? Throw it in the chat because this is important, guys. Once you get this, someone with expendable income, good, good. Let's get a little bit more specific. Let's be a little bit more strategic. A fashionable woman, yes, yes, I like that, okay. How about this? Somebody that already owns that exact product. Hello, repeat customers. Who's the most likely person to buy shopping centers in, in downtown? The people that already own shopping centers in downtown. And moreover, Guess what income producing properties get at the uh, owners get at the, at the beginning of every month? What do they get? Dollar dollar bills, y'all. They get paid. They get cash flow. So what these people are doing is they already own a specific type of, 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 of property. It's cash flowing every month. They got money in their pocket. Do you think they would like to buy more investments like this one? Yes. So guys, what I'm here to tell you is when you take a listing, the first thing you should be doing is going out, going to CoStar. CoStar, I happen to love those guys. But pull a list of everyone that's bought and sold in the last 24 months. Hello. Like the person that's going to buy those red Jimmy Choo shoes is someone that maybe owns them in brown and loves them or owns them in gray. Find everybody that's bought the similar type of product recently. If they've recently sold, they got money. They maybe they were looking to do a 1031. If they recently bought, it means they love that, that area of town. I remember I um I, I sold a property in an area of town that maybe people, some people just don't like. And I remember saying, like, like, who's gonna buy it? Like, I would, I'm an investor, right? And I'm like, I wouldn't ever buy in this area of town. Like, it's just just not for me. And I'm like, who the heck would ever buy? Guess what? Someone that already owns there. Duh, right. So that's what I did, guys. So I pulled a likely list of sellers and buyers and I dialed and dialed. Okay. And, and within two weeks, I had a buyer come in the door. And in I it was the first person that came in the door. They made an it made me an offer in the parking lot. We were asking four, two, and I think he came in at three nine, something like that. Um, we wound up settling at three nine eighty, somewhere around there, right? Um, and we kept the deal together and there was a bunch of, of, of bumps along the way. Like the copper got stolen out of the building. It was just, it was, it was a mess. Um, Alexa, uh, Hey, Alexa says, how do you find and call buyers when you're new and don't have direct investors, uh, to call, to dial? Um, so buyers, you can find them on CoStar. If you go to CoStar.com, you can look into a submarket. You can draw a polygon. You can draw a, um, use it. You could do like an area of town. You could do a zip code. There's a whole bunch of different ways of doing it, but pull those and you can see exactly everybody that's transacted in that area. And you can even choose the amount of time. Good question. Yeah. 
Um, and so and I kept the deal together, right? So by so three percent on the three nine was like whatever, hundred and what hundred and twenty thousand, something like that. It was a little under hundred twenty. By me going and pulling a list of seventy people. Okay, 70 people had bought or sold in this small little submarket in the last, and I had to dial it over and over again, right? Of the 70 people, it put an additional $60,000 in my pocket. How many of you would dial a list of 70 people if it meant you making an additional $60,000? Type 70K in the, in the chat, guys, okay? What I'm trying to show you guys is I'm not Albert Einstein. I just, I just use kind of like, like common sense and common sense, if you do it over and over again, it's just like, yeah, but guess what? No one else wants to do this stuff. No one else will take the extra step. I'm, I'm so emphatic about this because I look, I'm like, okay, just to prove my point, guys, okay? And I want a roaring show of hands. I want a capital Y, capital E, capital S. If you've ever called a commercial real estate listing broker and they didn't return your phone call or they returned it a week later, type a capital Y, capital E, capital S. How many of you ever dealt with that junk, right? That's what I'm talking about, folks. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. the lines blowing up. Everybody, Brooke, Simon, Star, Ron, everybody, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Most people aren't even doing the basics, nonetheless going a little bit further, you know? So, um, oh, Ron, I see you have your, your hand up. Go ahead and, and put the, the question in the chat. I'll be happy to, or, or direct message me. I'll be happy to, uh, to answer at the end. But that's the point, guys. Nobody's just doing their job. No one's just doing their ABCs. If they're not picking up the phone, when you are calling them out of the property that they are being paid to represent, do you think they're going and calling another list? Do you think they're going above and beyond so they can make a bit more money for themselves, their families, and their community? Uh-uh. So again, when I talk about everybody wants to be a one percenter, but nobody wants to do what 99% of people won't do. And that's just take the extra step, go the extra mile, right? Okay. And that is how I put $178,650 in my pocket in one day by selling a property. I think it was 3980. Yeah, four and a half percent. Right. Um, because all I did was I found something, I stuck to it. I called it over and over again. I didn't let it quit. And once I got the opportunity, I used common sense. I found everybody that bought and sold that in that area. I called them over and over and over again, some more PhD. I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm not that bright. So I just like, just do it over and over and over again. Hopefully something will happen, right? And the most important part to understand is guys, you got to stick with it. Got to stick with it, right? Very, very important, okay? So, um, so th th that's, that's what it comes down to guys. Now, here's the thing. Now, I wish I could say that every single one deal that I ever closed was this big. They're not all this big, but what I wanted to give you as an example, that um, when I closed this transaction, I was doing, I was working like, like, um, uh, you know, closely as a, as a, a listing agent for a year, if I think it was 500 days or so, like I was really concentrating that when I said I made it my main focus. Okay. Within 500 days. Okay. I was able to put this together. So how many of you type 500 in the chat? If within 500 days, you'd like to be putting six-figure transactions into your pocket, okay? This is not black magic. This is just one plus one plus one equals three, right? Very, very straightforward, okay? Uh, so sphere of influence. Uh, Martin, to, to access the replay, we're going to be um, offering it. Uh, just type it in, in, the, uh, in the chat. You want to watch the replay. Someone from my team will reach out to you. Yes, Star says 500. Courtney says 500. Hey, Alexa says 500. It, guys. This is available for everybody, but here's the thing. For everybody that's typing 500 in the chat, okay, only 1% of you will do the things necessary, okay? And I want that to be a wave go fall. At the end of the day, most people don't want it bad enough. So find out what your why is. If it's your family, if you want a better life for yourself and your children, if you want to give your kids the things that they never had, that you never had as a kid, if you want to dedicate, you know, you know, donate to your community or your church, or just make this planet a better place, and maybe pass it forward, right? That's what you need to deep dig down deep and figure out. Okay. Um, Ron says, treat the small lease that makes you 10K the same as the sale that makes you 100 k Absolutely, Ron. And I'm going to talk to that point too. Here's a real cool one, right? I have a client of mine, love him. He's like one of my favorite guys ever, right? I put him in 4,700 square feet like 10 years ago. 
And uh, I always stayed in contact with him. Good dude. Dropped the bottle of Prosecco off at at uh, at, um, at New Year's. You know, um, guys, for the, for those of you listening, okay, if you just take nothing out of today, okay, um, I know I'm running a little bit late, but I'm fired up today. Uh, I call this the Prosecco effect. Go to Costco, buy a case of Prosecco at the end of the year. Okay. The, if you buy like, I think it's like DeMarco or whatever, uh, it's like $12.99 a bottle. So it's like 150 bucks for a case of 12. Okay. And then go to the 12 people that are the closest that you're the closest to doing business with, whether it's a listing you got, whether it's someone that's on the fence of signing a listing agreement, maybe it's a lease you're about to close, whatever, whatever. Okay. And drop it off and wish them a happy new year. Hey, Charlie, good to see you. Wishing you all the best in the new year. And when Charlie is celebrating, watching that ball drop with his family and his loved ones, and he's, he's toasting with your bottle of Prosecco, who do you think he's thinking about? Every single time I've ever done that, that $150 case of Prosecco has probably paid me back 100, 500 times, a, a thousand times over. It, it's stupid. So just do it. It's a classy move and, um, and, and, and very few people are doing it. Okay. Um, but but getting back to this, the small leases. So I used to drop off a bottle of Prosecco every year because I just happened to like this guy, right? And he he came on some hard times. I put him in a, in a small space. He couldn't really keep it. His business wasn't doing all that well. And he called me up like three, four years later. Said, hey, man, like I want to buy a building. And I said, cool. So I sent him over to a banker. And sent him over to the banker. And the banker said, hey, listen, this guy just really isn't all that qualified. Um, it's gonna He's got to straighten some things out. Okay, cool. Well, guess what, folks? A couple of years later, I sold him a 20 plus thousand square foot building. He was over $5.6 million that he, he, he paid for it. It, was, it. it seemed expensive at the time, but in retrospect, it's cheap. And I made over $100,000 on that sale. So the guy that I made 2,500 bucks from 10 years ago, I made $100,000 from last year, right? So to Ron's point, treat the small lease this that, that you make 10K, This and I didn't even make 10K on that one because uh, it was like eight bucks a foot or seven bucks a foot at that time. But uh, the same as you, the ones that you make 100K, treat everybody like a king or a queen because you just don't know where they're going to be in 10 years. If they're working as hard as you are, they're going to be uh, in a place where you can help them and they'll remember the people. They always remember the people on the way up as you meet on the, you meet the same people on the way up as you meet on the way down. Make sense, folks? Okay, cool. So thank you so much for coming. Really, really appreciate it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and uh, if you're looking for a replay, just, just type it in hashtag replay uh, in the chat and uh, look forward to seeing you same time next week. By the way, guys, um, we do this every single week, 5.30 Eastern, okay? Take something you learned today and implement it tomorrow. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor, right? <laughs> as as uh, DJ Khaled says, right? Do yourself a favor and take one thing. And then next week, come again and take one thing and implement that. And over and over and over again. Whether it's you just prospect the next five days in a row, just do that. Just start with behaviors because the way, you know, you, you the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with that one step. Just start, take something that I shared with you today and put it into your business. And I want to hear how that, how that helps you. Okay, guys, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate your time. We'll see you next week.